Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today I got a Class D amplifier. I did a little research. I think this chip is supposed to be a good one. And, you know, we'll see what the board looks like. It's a double-sided board, two ounce copper on each side. So it's a nice thick board with lots of copper. That's a good start. Uh, just visual inspection. It looked like it had nice parts. Uh, the placement looked good. And, you know, look at that e-sync. Okay, this is a 350 watt amplifier in 8 ohms, 700 watts into 4 ohms. It's a mono block, but what's interesting, the way they designed this, there's a bridge rectifier uh, for two of these caps to give the plus voltage. There's another bridge rectifier for two caps for the minus voltage. So there's two bridge rectifiers, you know, they're individually rectifying the voltage for the caps. Kind of a neat twist. The inductor looks like a nice size. So I'm going to bring the camera over. I'm going to show you this. But first, let's take a look at the documentation. And I want to show you the schematic for this. And, uh, well, I don't know what the schematic is for this one. But I'm going to show you a schematic that's probably very similar to this. Okay? Let's go take a look. All right, guys. Here we are at the Finion website. And we're look. Here's the pathway I'm at right here. We're under discrete class D audio amplifiers, the IRS 2092 SPBF. Okay, and I'm just showing you the page and some of the benefits they talk about. You can integrate it into a class D design, 16 pin package, folding input pins enable easy half bridge implementation. Programmable bi-directional overcurrent protection, self-reset function, programmable preset dead time for improved THD performance. You can operate up to plus minus 100 volt, so you can rate up to 500 watt output power. Start and stop click noise reduction. High noise immunity operates up to 800 kilohertz. And uh, audio reference design it shows it there. So um, here's a diagram of what's inside the chip. Okay. So we have the input circuit and it comes through. And see, the input comes in through a negative and it goes to another negative. So now we're back to positive. And that way our output is in the same phase as our input. And you see these dashed lines. This part here is the floating input. It's isolated from the output side. This is floating high side output. And this is uh, these are the drives, the HO and the LO, high side and low side. So you have two FETs. And here's our current sense. It's on the low side, which makes it easier. Low side current sense. And you can see it comes in this gate with this uh, signal. So this is an OR gate. This OR that makes this happen. And you got the protection circuit. H, uh, this is a high voltage level shift. See this dashed line? That's where our isolation is here. So we basically have three uh, isolated circuits from each other. All right. And that's what's inside this chip. And you can see what it does is this HO drives a high side FET, LO drives a low side FET. And in between those two FETs is our switching node tied to an inductor and a C. LC filter to uh, smooth out the ripple from this uh, these square waves that are happening over here. And then you hook your speaker up here, reference to ground. This is your feedback resistor right here comes back around and into your input signal and this is your compensation network these resistors and capacitors and then over current set your voltage reference uh, tied into your over current set and this is for your dead time these two resistors set dead time all right and here's your VAA that's set up right here taking your uh, your plus B voltage and going through resistor capacitor and setting up your VAA input. So you have a, you'll end up having a minus voltage row and a plus voltage row. 
and then you have some offset here to give your 12 volt uh, for your VCC at this point. All right, so let's just go over and take a quick look at the data sheet. Now, this is the data sheet for the FETs. You know those two FETs that we're showing that you're driving? This is what's on the board, okay? And so just showing you that, it's 200 volt FETs, 24 amps for uh, drain current, and the RDS on is 0.1 ohm. Not bad for 200 volt FET. Okay, another important parameter is the total gate charge. This uh, 57 to 86 nanocoulombs, that is what you need to charge and discharge the gate to turn it on and off. And we'll bring that up a little bit later here. So just showing you some of the rest of the information. Also the reverse recovery time. You can kind of see what those numbers look like. Now, when we compare this to GANFET, which I've done in the past, showing GANFETs to FETs, you'll see the GANFET numbers are much smaller than these, so they can go faster, which that'll come up a little bit later, okay? And here's the typical gate drive. So when you start to turn it on, it comes up here, and right around 6 volts, it has this shelf where you have to go from roughly 15 nanocoulombs to almost 40 nanocoulombs before you start to rise again and turn that thing on okay so that's even though they're voltage control devices you have to pump current into them to charge up this uh, capacitance and here's your safe operating area okay what i want to show you is this article that was in epn this is 2007 and this article is about the scalable class d design written by Jun Honda and he's from International Rectifier which is now Infineon which is now part of Infineon I should say this curve right here shows distortion you can see 0.1% right across here and 0.01% down here so if you're good with 0.1% you're good all the way out here now these three different curves are for the different voltage uh, sources you might give to the rails okay and the reason 25 volt is noisier it's because it runs out of power because of the voltage it doesn't have to do with how much voltage you have on chips it's just a matter of how much power you can get out with these and 35 volts you can get out more so that's why it comes out here before it goes up but you can kind of see these all track about the same so whatever power level you want to give the you know the functions about the same on the output but you can see how low the distortion is you know this is 0.05 so you're all the way out 0.05 way out here so and this is uh, by the way this is 50 so that's 60 watts where that blue line hits right there and this is 100 watts out here and we have 200 watts over here now this is just an example based on whatever you know circuit they had so i just kind of want to show you some of the features about the article they talk about noise isolation and they talk about those isolated stages i was uh talking about so in a discrete design you want to keep this stuff really tight and the way to keep it tight is isolate those stages so that's what that's about overload protection gate drive mosfet switching now if you read through this they talk about switching performance and something that you know can be a problem is just how fast you can turn on the gate drive that they talk about right through here so again with the gan fit this this part of here is taken care of okay let's go over here air amplifier with noise isolation We're back to the isolated stages We're kind of showing the block diagram there Okay, so I've kind of shown you the block diagram there, your low pass filter, your speaker. Now, what I want to get back to is, uh, besides the gate drive, this dead time. Keeping the dead time prevents shoot through from the top FET and the bottom FET. So you don't want shoot through where your current just shoots right down through here and shorts and basically takes out both FET. So you got to have some dead time. When this guy turns, top FET turns off, dead time bottom turn fit turns on dead time top turns on 
So a little dead time. With the GANFET, you don't have to wait as long because they're off much quicker. Okay, just want to point that out again, International Rectifier. Back when they were in National Rectifier, and that was November 2007 article. So it's a good article to read. All right, so now going to the day sheet for the IRS 2092. So you see right here, plus minus 100 again, the gate drive again, same things we saw before, selectable dead times. You got these fixed dead times, which 105 is usually good for about anything, even slow FETs. But uh, you could probably go faster than 25 with GAN FETs. But yeah. Uh, 800 kilohertz, you'd have to have a very short dead time with that fast frequency. And there's the chips, the through hole and the surface mount version. And again, block diagram. Okay, here's some waveforms just showing you in picture form what the dead time looks like. You know, you turn on one FET, comes on and you turn it off. And then there's some dead time here. Before you turn the next one on, there's some ramp time. So there's these dead times here. Just wanted to kind of show you a picture form what that looks like. Here's your times right here. Now, here's another picture of the inside of the chip. A little bit more level to this one. You can see a little bit more information. Kind of interesting. You notice each output drive has a totem pole. They call these totem pole drives. So this guy gets pulled up and down just like we're doing to the output. You see the whatever drive here, you get the inverted drive here. And the last thing I want to show you is the application note for this guy. And let me just show you how much detail there is. If you want to read through this, there's a nice little block diagram. It shows you how to select components. This talks about the click noise elimination. So it has this little startup thing where it turns off the switching until it starts up and then it says, okay, go ahead and turn on. So that way you can uh, have some off time and don't hear those clicks. And this talks about MOSFET selection, you know, the power dissipation, uh, switching speed. And here we are with the overcurrent protection circuit. And there's some nice graphs showing you how that works. Again, the isolated stages. And here we talk about program for the high side overcurrent threshold. And over here on the right, you see the dead time generator, how to determine optimal dead time. And here's a graph here, effective dead time. So yeah, it goes into a lot of interesting information. We can talk about that one day in another video. And here's an example showing how to supply the VAA and the VASS, you know, plus minus five volts into these with the switch mode power supply. So you have these filters, RC, RC, and you really clean up the signal before it gets to these uh, pins. And over here, negative bias clamping. You want to make sure your common doesn't go more than uh, a diode drop above your VSS. All right, guys, I'm going to bring you over and show you the board close up. And what we're going to do is I'm going to power this. It's, you know, it's meant for AC power input, right? But I'm going to use my tracking power supplies up here. I'm going to put a DC voltage in for now, uh, just so I don't have to worry about the AC part of it. It'll be a real simple power supply. Uh, I want to see the performance of the Class D output, okay? So what I want to do is do the Bode plot. So anyway, let's come over here, power this bad boy up, take it out of the wrapper, and uh, take a look at it. All right, guys, so this way it comes in this package here, rectifiers, contacts here, output to the speakers here, input from AC from a transformer here. So all you have to do is add a transformer pretty much, well, some other input circuitry. And here's the heat sink with the two MOSFETs on it. Not a bad size for a 350 watt amplifier, right? In the 8 ohms. And there's the backside. Nice copper plane, some circuitry for the input here. Let's take it out of this uh, paper. All right, now we can see it a little bit better. So, okay, so here's the input power right here AC, AC, ground. Here's the output, ground and out. And 
a bridge rectifier, and the capacitors. So this is the input, and you can see the heat sink standing up on the controller chip right down there. Kind of crazy, right? <laughs> I think it's kind of crazy that they epoxy it to a capacitor, which you don't want capacitors getting hot. So we're going to test the temperature on this. Hopefully the size of that thing, I, I can't imagine it getting too warm. So here's the input op amp right here. And another look at the input, you can see these red aluminum electrolytics. And here is the LC filter, the C right here. And it looks like the snubber circuitry over here. There's a FETS down there. And they've got this guy monitoring the temperature. That's a nice touch. Okay, I like to put some nice gauge wire into the terminals so they're stiff and they don't bend around and touch. And they're long enough that I can connect things to because I have scope probes and things like that. Now, this comes from my split power supply or my tra tracking power supply. So, put the ground on there. I'll put the plus, right? It's going through the bridge rectifier. So, the diodes in the bridge rectifier are going to steer the plus and minus. So, it doesn't really matter where I put my plus and minus. And I think I'll use this power supply. So, it'll be in series. So, I'll push this button in. This one stays out. And then the plus goes to the master. And the green goes to either one of these. Internally, they're tying these together. So it's like stacking batteries on top of each other. And the negative terminal of this one will be my minus output. So minus plus and, and the ground, or return in the center. All right, so you know what? I removed the heavy copper wires here. I stripped these back. I'm just gonna put the load resistor directly into the output terminals. And there's enough room here that I can grab my THD meter and still come right here and I still have some room to grab onto uh, some of the metal here with uh, some differential probes. And then over here on the input, there are smaller terminals. So I use some small bus wire wire and I'll just spray those out and I'll connect my generator there. All right guys, just real quick, I'm gonna show you this crazy setup. I've got all kinds of stuff going on. I've got the Omicron Lab instrument here up on its side which uh, I've got the ice station transformer so the output from the Omicron is going into this ice station transformer wrapping back over here to the input and then I've got a scope here actually GW Instec I was looking at the input signal just to see make sure things look good and so channel one it's also known as receiver one it goes to a differential probe here I'll show you that in a moment and that's going back over here to these probes right down here that you can see going to the input okay channel two is coming over here to another differential probe going to uh, these probes here at the output and there's the two mix sig differential probes this one here's the input the dp 1013 10x and this guy's dp 1000 or i guess 10,007 and set for 100x okay so that's kind of the set right. up and then just zooming up here I'm just going to show you the other differential probes coming from the Pintech back here set a uh what is that 20x and that's going to the mix so i can just look at the output so there is the gw instec looking at the input yeah, so i've just got all these things set up and over here is omicron on my laptop i'm using the macbook uh, i've got parallel so i'm running a pc software which is what the Omicron is so I'm able to do that with the with the Mac and yeah so there we go so very flexible software just use parallels you can run it on Mac oh and yeah we can't leave out the Testo using the Testo uh, great meter here looking at the Testo to just probe things making sure all the voltages and everything are good and since I'm showing you everything, I, I want to show you the Hiroki too. This is the 4256, the DT4256. That's an awesome meter, guys. For a 6,000 count meter, this is, this is one of the nicer ones, I think. But 
So I like to use it when I can, so I'm using the Testo and the Hioki on this. And what I want to show you also, let me zoom down on this. All right, so you see these resistors. I have some uh, 4.7Ks. This is soldered underneath the board in parallel to this uh, 3.9K, okay? Had to do it on both sides. And that's because my power supply is down in the 30 volt range. You have to be over 40 volts to use these resistors. You're supposed to be around 2K with the lower voltage rails, but in the end, I'm gonna test this thing with higher voltage rails and show you the full output power in another video, okay? All right, guys, so. All right, guys, so I've got the Bode Analyzer Suite up and we're under the Vector Network Analysis tab. We're gonna come down here, gain phase, and select that measurement type. Now, as this comes up, I've got the differential probes coming into this. So the output is going through that isolation box. See it down here in the lower le left corner, and then into our class D amp. Channel one, also known as receiver one, is looking at the input. Channel two, receiver two, is looking at the output. And up here, we can see the receivers. Receiver one is 20 dB. That's that uh, differential probe, it's at 10X, which is every 10X is 20 dB. And receiver two is actually 100X, so we want to go to 40 dB. We're going to do a source level input, 0 dBm. And we're going to go from 10 Hertz to 100K. Okay, which center will be 50K and spans 100K. Okay, number of points. Let's go to uh, 400 points. We could choose a lot more, you could see. And let's go, we're going to start off with one hertz because we're, uh oh, we could do three hertz, but since we're going to start at 10 hertz, I'm going to start at one hertz resolution and it'll go really slow and then I can speed it up by changing this or as it's plotting and stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and turn on the power supply. You'll hear the fan kick on. Sorry about that. All right. Also, um, I've got another differential probe to the mix sig right here on the bench just to make it easy so I can look at time domain and see the frequency. Okay, I'm bringing up the power supply plus minus 31.6. All right, it's up. And I'm going to go and hit a single sweep. I think I'm ready. Let's do it. It's going to go really slow. And by the way, if you look at the mix sig, you can see the signal. Now, I think that's probably come from the generator. I don't know, you know, the low frequency, a little distorted, but it could be, yeah, I doubt it's from the class D, but anyway, um, looking at the Bode, you can see how flat it's coming off at 10 Hertz. It's really slow. I'm going to stop talking and speed up while you're, you're watching so you don't have to see how slow this is. Alright guys, this is just killing me. It's way too slow. So what I'm going to do is go to 3 hertz and hopefully we won't have a signal dropout. Let's see what happens. Should speed up a little bit. Okay, you see we dropped out a signal there. That it could have been either my resolution, just not enough points, and there's just a spot where it dropped out. So now that we're out, we're past 100K, I'm gonna go to 10 hertz resolution. Hopefully we won't have another dropped uh, point there. You can see it sped up. By the way, look at the mix sig. We're about 16 volts RMS. That's about 32 watts output, guys. Okay, it's just starting to slope down a little bit. We're approaching 10 kilohertz. 
not too bad okay we're approaching 20 kilohertz and we're okay yeah now it's rolling off and it just took a dive and that was about just before 40 kilo kilohertz all right hey guys that, that doesn't look too bad right all right guys so what do you think of that that was kind of cool right uh had to pull out the omicron do the body plot pretty cool stuff <laughs> that's this bad boy right here hey by the way this is from austria uh previous video when i first showed this thing i said it was from england i don't know why i thought it was english but yeah that's i've known about these guys for a while and for some reason i thought they're english they're Aust they're from austria so yeah pretty cool uh Got a little Bodhi box down here, the isolation box coming in the input, a bunch of differential probes, just trying to keep everything isolated. So, uh, next video, what I like to do is I like to take this guy up to power, like get full power, see if we can do that, and take uh, some THG measurements along the way, and maybe even do a Bodhi plot at high power. So, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that. I'm trying to find a Class D amp that looks really good, is worthy of putting in a box with a nice power supply and comparing it to the Class A amp that I had built for a friend. And then I'll send it to him and see what he thinks. He doesn't really care about Class D, Class A, all that stuff. He just likes good sound. He loves the Class A. Loves it. So. I'm just find, trying to find a Class D amp that's worthy to, you know, go to the trouble to put in a box to send it to them. So, what do you guys think? Uh, should we go further with this one? Have you guys had any input? Have you tried this amp before? It looks to me like quality parts. It looks like a nice board. And so far, it looks good. But I haven't done a lot of power on it yet. And I want to put a transformer on it and, you know, run it with real AC power, the voltages it's meant for. Okay? What do you guys think? All right. Uh, I want to thank my patrons as always. That's, uh, really appreciate those guys. Holidays are coming up. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. I've got some other videos I need to do. I got a Kai Wheats. Kai Wheats is doing a special sell for, uh, the... Black Friday sales and all that kind of stuff. So I want to do a video. They sent me some new meters, a new release of meters. I want to put those out. And I've got some meters around here, and I got some Kiwi's tools that I want to do a giveaway uh, on Thanksgiving. I'll be out of town, but I'm still going to do that giveaway. So you'll see that uh, Thanksgiving Day, I think. And um, all right, guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.